Does anyone else's thumb do this? Like just in specific angles. No, it's not doing. Oh, oh, it's when I flex my hand. Does it do it this way? <laughs> Does anyone else's hand do that? Oh my god. Like I have it happen sometimes when I'm like holding my phone in a really weird way. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. Oh, I can't get it to stop. Hey guys, it's Kismet. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to touch on a topic that I feel like I don't see too much in the cosplay community, at least on YouTube. There are a lot of videos out there about how to get into cosplay, but I feel like not a whole lot talk about like the nitty gritty, the materials, the tools, that kind of thing. But also I don't find a ton of content about like the middle ground of cosplay where you're not quite like god tier level, but you're like a step above beginner, you know? So today I wanted to go over a couple of beginner things in case you're new to the hobby. And I also wanted to cover some next level or level up uh, materials and tools. Things that, again, you're not quite like balls to the wall all in doing it full time, but you also have been doing it for a while and you're looking to upgrade some stuff. So without any further ado, let's start with the beginner things. As far as material goes for first time cosplayers, I highly recommend cardboard and cardstock. And by cardstock, I just mean like the different kind of cardboard that you get from cereal boxes, which I guess isn't cardstock at all, is it? <laughs> These materials are typically very, very low cost and oftentimes recycled, which is great. You know, maybe you just finished a box of cereal, maybe you got something shipped to you in the mail and now you have this empty box that you don't just wanna like throw into the abyss. So maybe you could use it for a costume. It's very user-friendly and easy to work with. It bends pretty nicely. You can get some shapes out of it. You can build complex shapes with it and things adhere to it very, very easily. Things like glues, paints, you're not really gonna have any issues finding something that works with cardboard. For example, my Batgirl cowl, which you can see right there in the background, is made with a Pepacuda pattern and cardboard. I put the cardboard pattern together, I covered it in some resin, and then I put tons of filler on it, sanded it down, another coat of resin, uh, and then painted it. So it's just a good material to start with, especially if you're working with a new method of building, you can kind of feel around and, and see how it works for you. The only problems are, like I said, it is pretty easy to bend so this is the kind of thing that if you make a cosplay piece with it and you don't store it carefully it can get beat up pretty quickly and because it's essentially made of paper it is not the most sturdy material so like I just said you can break it or bend it pretty easily and also if it gets wet it's probably not gonna hold up water-soluble paints it'll probably get fine or it'll probably be fine but if you get rained on at a convention you might have a hard time salvaging your piece the next thing is to get hot glue and a hot glue gun you can get big industrial ones which I used to have but after three to four years of tried and true trusty use it, it died on me. It just completely died. But you can get super, super cheap options at craft stores. They're smaller guns. They uh, don't hold as much glue at once, so you have to refill them more often, but they work perfectly fine. So the nice thing about hot glue is that it is extremely versatile. You can use it as a glue. You can use it uh, to craft little like gemstones and that diffuse light actually really, really nicely. You can also use it for structure reinforcement. If you are working with cardboard and you have a part of it that you know you are worried might cave in or something, just just fill it with a ton of hot glue across all of your seams, all sorts of crap, and you can reinforce pieces really, really well. It's super accessible, available at pretty much any craft store, and it's relatively cheap. The downsides with hot glue is that it doesn't necessarily stick to everything, especially really smooth surfaces or glossy surfaces, and there are actually quite a lot of materials that it will melt, including itself. <laughs> This could also be a, a pro or a con, but because it doesn't stick perfectly to everything, it's kind of easy to rip off. Hi, I just realized that my microphone wasn't plugged in the whole time, so hopefully the audio just got a whole lot better for you guys. <laughs> my bad. Right, it is easy to rip off of a lot of things, which means it can compromise the sturdiness of your work, but it also means that if you mess up, you can just rip it off and try again. I also recommend looking into buying a cheap sewing machine if you're looking into getting to the sewing part of the hobby. Singer tends to be the starting brand for a lot of people. They make really, really cheap machines that do break after maybe a year of use, depending on how often you're using it. This can be kind of irritating, but if you're just dipping your toes in the waters and not really sure if you wanna fully commit to this hobby, they have some really good price ranges for that. And then later down the line, if you decide that this is something that you wanna spend more time doing, you can go ahead and invest in a nicer 
uh, sewing machine. There's a lot of research out there about which are the best sewing machines. I personally use a baby lock, the Anna model, uh, and it has been holding up really, really well. I think I've had it for about five years now, and I really haven't had any problems with it. And now that I think about it, I should probably send it in to get it cleaned if I want it to continue working. <laughs> okay, so right now I'm just going to rapid fire a couple of other uh, really basic beginner materials, just in case you're entirely new to arts and crafts in general. So here we go. Uh, paint brushes, including a chip brush, which is really nice for details. A good pair of fabric scissors, which pretty much means you buy like a nice-ish pair of scissors and you only use it for fabric. Uh, some acrylic paint, the cheap stuff will do perfectly fine. A couple of box cutters, especially if you're going to be working uh, with cardboard, because we have all been there when we try to cut something out of cardboard and it just your hand is in the middle of it and it, the angles aren't just get a box cutter it makes life easier <laughs> a ruler or a straight edge uh, and some safety pins oh my god the amount of times that I like put a costume on and pinned it in places to you know fit it better and then tried to take it off and was stabbed all over the place safety pins Oh my god, it's the kind of thing that you know, but you've never put thought to, you've never thought about, and then it just dawns on you one day and you're like, oh, I am that stupid. Phenomenal. <laughs> and last but not least, I recommend that you do some serious planning when you're making a costume to help you uh, budget costs, to help you not forget any pieces, and if you would like to see what that is like, I have made a video about that on my channel, about how I plan a costume. Perhaps it could help you on your planning process. Okay, now moving on to next level or level up, or whatever, <laughs> tools and materials for cosplay. So first off, I recommend that perhaps you graduate from cardboard and move on to foam and warbler. These are much sturdier options that you can get really, really complex shapes with. They don't really care if they get wet. They don't really care if they get a little bit of uh, use and abuse while wearing them and, you know, going around photo shoots and slamming into walls because your shoulder pads are too big to fit through doors so you have to travel like this. <laughs> they are more expensive materials though, and I would say they require uh, also a level up in your glue that you're using. Hot glue can be fine for a lot of these, but if you want something to really stand the tests of time, you're gonna need to upgrade your glue. So many people have talked about using foam and warbla on YouTube, so I'm not gonna get any further into it. <laughs> but speaking of glue, I do recommend that eventually you upgrade from hot glue to a contact cement. Specifically, I use the brand Barge. I think it is something that a, a lot of people use. So it's tried and trusted. Tried and tested. True. <laughs> tried. Once you use this, it is nearly permanent. Not a whole lot will rip it apart. And you know, especially once it sits for a couple of days or weeks, it is really, really stuck there, which is also a downfall. It is nearly permanent, which means if you screw up, you're gonna have a lot harder of a time fixing a mistake. It also gives off some really, really nasty fumes. So if you do upgrade to this, I recommend working in a well-ventilated area and wearing a respirator and maybe even some goggles if you got some sensitive eyes. You open a can of that and you're like, Oh yeah, this is toxic as shit. <laughs> Next, I recommend looking into and investing in a Dremel or a heat tool. I personally have a Dremel. I have yet to use a heat tool, but these two things make it so much easier to add details into certain uh, props or costume bits. I used it for my horns uh, for Jester and it really made them come to life. I was obsessed with how they came out. But again, the heat tool creates some really nasty fumes and the Dremel does create a lot of foam dust, which is not good for your lungs. <laughs> Go figure. So if you do use these, once again, I recommend working in a well-ventilated space and wearing a respirator mask and some goggles. Something else, if you're working with fabric often, I recommend buying some pinking shears. These basically are like a pair of scissors, but the blade is zigzag. So when you cut your fabric, you get a zigzag pattern on that edge. This helps a lot with fabrics that tend to fray. Speaking of fabric, the other thing that I recommend you getting if you're working with it a ton is a serging machine or a serger. It's like a sewing machine, but as you go, it cuts off the excess for you. And it also puts like a nice little end cap on your fabric so that, again, if it's something that frays, that won't happen anymore. It keeps your work looking very, very clean, very, very professional if you're gonna be doing contests or anything. And a lot of times it can actually help with the integrity of your product staying together longer. However, that being said, it is something that has a lot to maintain. You have to switch out the blades pretty often. You really need to keep it clean 
and it's got a lot of thread that it uses and threading it is just, it makes me feel like that geometry lady meme. It's got a very, very steep learning curve and it's just another machine that you have to store somewhere within your space. And speaking of machinery, this is the last level up that I'm going to talk about. And it is something that I do think is kind of closer to like being a pro or whatever. And that is just machinery in general. Things like uh, Cricut cutters and things like 3D printers. These kinds of machines really, really, really expand not only your skill set but also your options for different things that you can make different shapes uh, different you know complex designs and it also changes up your workload you can load a uh, CAD file into your 3d printer leave it for a couple of hours while you go work on something else but it does go without saying that these are very very expensive upgrades not only in the base machine itself but you do have to continually buy materials such as vinyl such as resin such as filament in order to continuously use these machines. Okay, that was kind of a long one, wasn't it? <laughs> if you made it all the way to the end, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any other ideas uh, for materials or tools, anything that I missed, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below, whether it's uh, beginner, next level slash intermediate or whatever, or if it's just pro cosplay. If you recently purchased something that you're obsessed with, tell us about it in the comments below. So maybe one day we may ascend to that level of but anyway, that is going to be all for me. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! I think I need to change up my background because the little face square uh, on my camera keeps trying to focus on that picture of me and on my little wig head. So I think I might need to change up the background.